everyone, this is MJ, and you are at my channel called Reading This Life. In today's episode, we're going to compare the Kindle and the Kobo. Just a little bit, an introduction. And as always, before we get started, remember to like this video, comment down below, and let me know, are you a Kobo person or are you a Kindle person? And also, let me know, are you a physical book person? Do you not like ebook readers? Let me know. Okay, so I am really tiptoeing into this experience with my recent purchase of the Kindle Paperwhite from the Amazon Prime sale. Um, I did get a cover for it yesterday, so I'm pleased with that because protect your tech, everyone, protect your tech. Um, so I'm going to take both my Kobo and my Kindle out of their cases, and we're just going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. This is going to be step one. Okay, so I have both devices out of their cases. First, we will look at the Kindle. Now, I did download some books from uh, Prime Unlimited. Um, I haven't started them yet, but of course, you know, they're gonna show me the covers that I downloaded. So one that I downloaded was The Deep by Nick Cutter. Um, it seemed interesting, so I just, you know, downloaded it and saved it on here. So here's the Kindle, as you all know, for all the Kindle people out there. It's pretty flat surface, super thin. You can see that. The um, plug for charging is on the bottom, as well as the on off button is over here. It took me a while to figure it out. There is nothing on the back except um, little specifics and then the Amazon logo. It has a decent weight to it, not bad, but I will say when I'm holding it, I'm not used to it because it's quite flat. And I will show you the difference between the Kobo. Um, it is also glossy all the way around. There's not, um, the screen goes all the way. There's not, um, the soft plastic does not go around, does not, um, you, you can't feel it around the edges here. That's what I'm trying to say. The screen texture goes all the way through. If you could see that shine as opposed to the matte plastic. Okay. So that is the Kindle. <clears throat> First difference with the Kobo. See that little lip right there? Right there. It has a little beveled edge on the one side for holding it. Okay, if you could see that. Not so much on this side, but definitely on this side. Come on, phone, zoom in. I'm gonna put down here. There we go. Okay, so you could see that. And also it's a little bit thicker here. Okay, as opposed to the other side. That's for gripping. This is how you grip the Kobo. Um, the Kobo also has two buttons. One right there, one right there. For page turning for going up and down for scrolling. Um, and also the screen, as I said with the, oh, sorry, as I said with the Kindle, the screen covers the entire surface. It does not with the Kobo. You have um, a frame, you have a line of demarcation where you can place your hands and not feel like you're touching the screen. Now with the Kobo as well, it is touch screen, so you don't have to use the buttons if you don't want to, but they are super convenient if you are reading and you want to flip pages. Definitely a pro for me. It's a pro um, feature. Also on the back of the Kobo, the Kobo is made by um, Rakuten. Rakuten was a shopping app. I think they're a lot bigger now, but it's a Rakuten Kobo now. And they are run through Walmart, I believe, because I get a Walmart um, pop-up every time I turn it on. And also I think Best Buy is in with Kobo. Um, the on off button for the Kobo is on the back. And if you can see this, it still has that matte plastic, but it's textured 
texturized. You could see that. So it just has a different feel to it, okay? And this sucker is used quite a lot, and there's the on off button. This is the Cobra Libra H2O, which means it is waterproof. And we'll zoom in here so you can see what I'm saying about the edge. It has like a frame around it, which is nice. <clears throat> and I'm telling you, flipping pages with this is great. Okay, so this this was a book that I finished yesterday. I'm gonna do a review on this. Holy crap, holy, what a book. Okay, so I am going to turn this on. It is powered off right now. That's the screensaver. I think I have some battery charge left. I should have some battery charge left. I've been reading a lot on this. And I'm also going to turn on the Kobo, or the Amazon. Now, as you can tell, Amazon is up and ready. Kobo needs a little extra time booting up. And that is just the technology. So as soon as I go in to the Kindle, it brings me up to my library, discover books, etc. Same thing on the Kobo. It takes you to um, my books, browse the ebooks from your library, view public holds from your library. This is really why I love the Kobo is to access library apps, to access library books. Um, and yeah, I don't have much of a charge. So the screen on the Kobo I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so this is what the bottom of the screen looks like on the Kobo. You can see that. It has home, my books, discovery, and more. Pretty organized. You can see that, okay. And you have your icons up here and um, but we're going to measure the screen width right now. Oops, I keep bumping you guys. Sorry. I'm sorry. There you go. Hi. Okay. So the Kobo. The screen is seven inches diagonal. And the Kindle diagonal is 6.8 which is a little bit smaller not much though and that's from corner of the actual screen to corner of the actual screen okay the size of the Kobo is five and a half across and six vertical the Kindle is four and three fourths across and 6.8 vertical. And there's the two home screens. The Kobo. And the Kindle. So starting out of the gate, what do I like about the Kobo better? I like that little lip. I like that little extra to hold on to. I feel like I don't want to touch the screen with this and I, I don't want to put my fingers on the actual screen. That bothers me a little bit and that's what the case is for. Um, I also like there's buttons on the Kobo so I could flip pages easily with just a tap. Now I could also just flip pages with my finger as well. With this you just have to touch the screen, which is fine. Um, that little lip though on the Kobo compared to the Kindle, it's just feels nice. I don't know how else to explain it. You really have to feel it to uh, check the difference. So those are my first impressions of what I like and what I don't like about each. I don't have a lot of negative to say about this, except it takes a little while. It takes much longer to boot up than this one. And this is only this was purchased in 2019, Christmas of 2019, Santa got it for me. 
Okay. Also, since I've owned my Kobo, I have not purchased one book. I have not spent any money on one book from Brackets and Kobo. It's all been library books. And that is amazing. So far with the Kindle, I am $4.99 in. And that was for a four month subscription to Kindle Unlimited. As a new Kindle owner, they did have a promo with Prime for um, with Prime Day for three months of Kindle Unlimited. Um, setting this up, they gave me four months for four dollars and ninety nine cents. So I took it. I think normally it's nine dollars and ninety nine cents for Kindle Unlimited. Um, so that four ninety nine, I use that as a, as an investment to really dive in, explore Unlimited. You know, um, take books out, see exactly what what they have save lists, all that good stuff. So um, I'm okay with the $4.99 based on the amount of books that I am able to secure and read and chalk it up to experience. Okay, so that is part one of my Kindle slash Kobo assessment. Right now, as it stands, Kobo is in the lead. Now, this is going to be a multi-part video series. Um, I'm going to charge both because this is running low because I've been using it to read library books. This is, I charged it yesterday, no, two days ago at full 90, 90 some percent. No, 100 percent. It's at 94 now. And I've only just been playing and browsing and downloading with this. Um, but I'm going to do a vlog starting on Sunday, um, checking uh, the battery life to see how each is operating to give you updates. We're gonna take it out in the sun and see what the glare is like. Um, probably take it in the bath, you know, all that fun stuff. We're really gonna put these two to the test. So um, right now, like I said, Kobo is in the lead based on design. Design for holding the device. For me, Kobo works better. Share your thoughts down below and let me know. What do you love about your Kindle? What do you, don't you like about your Kindle? Same if you're a Kobo person. What do you love and what don't you love? Okay, everyone. So I'm going to plug these suckers in. I am going to continue to put it through the test. Um, in the next couple videos in this series, we're going to look at um, the different um, downloading options for books on Kindle, um, Kindle Unlimited, also what other um, utilities are out there such as NetGalley, I think BookBub is a thing, um, you know, there may be others, um, you know, advanced reader copies with authors sending them to you, etc, etc. Uh, and looking at that and also looking at the Kobo store, like I said, I really don't go there. Um, there's also free books on Kobo from independent um, authors and small publishers. So we'll take a browse through that. Um, wear and tear. Battery life is huge. We're gonna take a look at that. Um, and specifics of you know other things within the design, within the programming. Kobo has a really cool feature um, regarding where you are in a book and how long it's going to take you to finish a book and how long it takes you to read a page, how long it takes you to read a chapter. Um, some pretty interesting stats that it has. So, um, this is going to be a multi-layered series. So I hope you are in it for the ride. Um, I've never had a Kindle before, so this is brand new, but as of today's video, just based on this without covers, um, Kobo wins for me just based on um, the design, the design of the device. Okay. All right. So I will see you in my next Kindle versus Kobo video. All right, everyone take care and goodbye for now. Make sure you're taking care of yourself so you can take care of others.